Well, today I would like uh, to answer the question of whether microorganisms uh, are able to grow older. Are they able to age and are they also able to die of old age? Well, um, and at the same time, while I try to answer this question, I also would like to show you a little bit here an in the video on how I collected um, some water microorganisms and put them under the microscope. And because this video is kind of self-explanatory, um, I decided to dive a little bit into the biology part and uh, talk a little bit about uh, the whole question about microbial aging. Well, the question is not so simple to answer because the word aging actually can mean different things in different contexts. And when we usually talk about aging, then we usually always have in our brain, in our mind, um, the aging of, um, of human beings, for example. We grow older and then ultimately when we're old, we die. So there is a certain limited lifespan. And the question is now, is this, do microorganisms have the same thing? Um, do they also have a limited lifespan? And the short answer is generally no, um, because the way that they reproduce is quite different different and the concept of individuality as we know it um, does not really apply in the same way to microorganisms as well. I think I need to explain this. When a cell, a single-celled microbe, for example, becomes um, older and it grows in size, it increases in volume, um, then it will if the conditions are right, it will divide. And then you have two cells and then both of them are young again, so to say. So with every cell division, um, a microorganism rejuvenates, it becomes young again. So there is actually no limited um, lifespan or no built-in lifespan in, in a microorganism. Um, however, researchers found out that sometimes the issues are not that easy either um, because um, if a cell, and they have done studies on yeast cells, for example, if a, a certain cell divides too often, then also DNA damage uh, will start to build up and uh, then it might not be able to divide anymore. Um, so a cell which reproduces asexually by simply by cell division, it will divide several times and then it's not able to divide anymore. Yeah, so you could actually consider this a form of an aging process. But if this is the case, then why have not all of those microorganisms stopped dividing by right now? Well, the way to solve this problem is, is uh, by actually undergoing a stage of sexual reproduction. And how does this work with microorganisms? In the case of yeast cells, two yeast cells are able to fuse together to make a so-called a diploid cell, which contains now the DNA of uh, both of the cells that fused together. And, and then this cell is able to divide again. And then after um, several divisions, it's able to form so-called haploid cells again, which only contain one set of chromosomes. And then basically these are cells are again able to fuse together and by kind of alternating those uh, stages, um, the cells keep themselves young and are also somehow able to overcome the problem of accumulated DNA damage. Um, so you see, um, it's very different actually than when we talk about aging in, in animals, for example, or in human beings. But it is a form of aging because uh, sooner or later they are not able to divide anymore. But it's actually not really a, a limited lifespan in the way that we actually know it for, for ourselves. Uh, and I think this is uh, one of the fascinating things uh, about biology that uh, when we try to ask these questions like, uh, for example, do cells have a memory? Are cells able to grow old? Um, all of these uh, questions are very... Um, there's this term, this fancy term called anthropocentric. This actually means very human-centered. Um, these are basically human concepts that we're trying to transfer into the microbial world. And, and this doesn't always work out very well because uh, the concepts really do not always um, fit quite well um, to, different, uh, to different organisms. And this is one of the things that I uh, think um, in biology, well, what makes biology so interesting is, is that we kind of uh, try to evaluate the environment and nature and uh, our surroundings very often through the, the filters that we have uh, um, in front of our eyes. And these filters are basically that we measure nature on our own standards that we have um, as human beings. So I'm going off into philosophy right now a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but um, in any case, uh, yeah, now you've learned two things. Uh, first of all, um, how to collect water samples um, from a river. Yeah, you've seen this here in the background. And at the same time, um, I hope I did give you a little bit of insight into the whole concept of microbial aging and why it's so important um, to have, uh, um, yeah, yes, a change of generations, for example, in the case of sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction to keep the cells young um, 
again. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> please do consider subscribing if you like these type of videos. And of course, please uh, do post comments. Maybe you also have um, something to contribute here. A comment section is, of course, always open. Happy micro hunting. As always, see you around next time. Bye-bye.